African Parks is an organization that has been instrumental in preserving the heart of Africa's natural beauty. While many of you may know about Prince Harry's involvement, allow me to take you on a journey through the story of African Parks, its beginnings, the incredible work it does, the challenges it faces, and how Prince Harry's leadership has played a crucial role in its success. To understand African parks, we need to go back to its roots. In the early 2000s, Africa's protected areas were under immense pressure. National parks, once striving with wildlife, had fallen victim to poaching, illegal lodging, and neglect. Communities living near these parks struggled with poverty, often turning to the park for resources they desperately needed to survive. Wildlife population were plummeted and Africa's rich biodiversity was at risk. It was in this context that African Parks was funded in 2000. The founders, including visionaries like Peter Fornhead, recognized that a new approach was needed to protect Africa's natural heritage. The mission was clear to take direct responsibility for the rehabilitation and long-term management of national parks in partnership with governments and local communities. But the challenge was enormous. How could they ensure that these parks could once again flourish? Answered laid in a unique model, one that combined public-private partnerships with community involvement. At its core, African Parks manages and protects national parks and wildlife reserves across Africa. African Parks is a not-for-profit organization, and what we do is we enter into partnerships with government that own these protected areas, and then we make sure that we manage them, that we look after them on behalf of government in partnership with local communities living in and around these areas to make sure that each and every one that we're responsible for is ecologically viable, socio-politically uh, acceptable and financially sustainable. We have come together to create uh, something that is going to be sustainable. Uh, in the long run and uh, lead to prosperity of our people, but also lead to satisfaction of our partners. Today, they manage 22 parks in 12 countries, covering over 20 million hectares of protected areas. Their mission is not just about protecting wildlife, but also about creating safe spaces for both animals and people. African Parks operates under a pioneering model that sets it apart. They enter into long-term agreements with governments, assuming full responsibility for the management and protection of these areas. This means they take on the day-to-day -day operations from employing rangers and building infrastructure to managing the park's financial sustainability. But it's not just about keeping poachers away. It's about working with local communities to create sustainable livelihoods. African parks believe that if communities benefit from the parks through jobs, education, and access to resources, they will help protect them. This holistic approach ensures that conservation and community development go hand in hand. Of course, such work comes with significant challenges. The most immediate danger is faced by the rangers brave men and women on the front lines of conservation. These rangers risk their lives daily to protect Africa's wildlife from
from poachers. The statistics are heartbreaking. Hundreds of rangers have been killed in the line of duty. They are not just fighting wildlife crime. They are fighting against organized networks that see Africa's wildlife as mere commodities. In recent years, African Parks has faced another set of challenges. Controversies around land management and local displacement. Conservation is complicated and there have been accusations of local communities being displaced or restricted from accessing traditional lands. While African Parks has worked hard to engage communities and ensure they benefit from conservation efforts, these issues have sparked difficult conversations around the balance between protecting wildlife and ensuring the rights of people. One of the most contentious cases centers around an African Parks managed reserve in Chad. Here, some local groups claim they were pushed off ancestral land. Their access to natural resources limited, all for the sake of protecting wildlife. These allegations have been amplified by a mix of media outlets, activists, and private interest, creating a narrative that African Parks is more focused on animals than people. But the full story is more complex. African Parks has consistently denied any forced displacement, stating that their mission is about balancing the needs of wildlife and people. Their model, which involves working with governments and local communities, is designed to ensure that conservation does not come at the expense of human rights. In their response to these accusations, African Parks points out that they provide jobs, build infrastructure, and offer alternative livelihoods for those living near the parks, improving both human and ecological well-being. For example, in Chad, they've collaborated with local leaders and governments to create community programs focused on education, healthcare, and employment. These efforts, African Parks argues, are about lifting the surrounding uh, populations and ensuring long-term sustainability, not just protecting wildlife for wildlife's sake. But why then do these accusations keep surfacing? This is where the, the, the story gets deeper and it starts to unfold as I started to investigate some more. There are whispers, I repeat, there are whispers that powerful interest backed by significant money are behind the pushback against African parks. Land development, mining, and other industries stand to gain if conservation efforts like African Parks initiatives are weakened or dismantled completely. The land protected by African Parks is often rich in minerals, natural resources, and development potential, meaning there's a lot at stake for those who want to exploit these areas. The clash between big money and conservation has played out before in many parts of the world, and Africa is no different. By pushing the narrative of people displacement and amplifying these claims, some actors hope to discredit African parks and clear the path for economic activities that could devastate the environment. African parks has not backed down They've increased 
transparency, opening up more lines of communication with local communities and international observers by inviting neutral organizations to audit their operations. They hope to dispel these accusations, but the challenge remains balancing the protection of vital ecosystems while addressing the real concerns of local people who may feel caught in the middle of powerful interests. Prince Harry, as a figurehead, has stood with African parks, calling for responsible conservation that works in harmony with human needs. This, his involvement, has shone a spotlight on the efforts to address these complex issues, pushing for an approach that respects both nature and communities. Ah, yes. Greetings, my esteemed viewers. I trust you're mildly entertained by today's episode of Majesty Sussex Report. I mean, it's not quite tea with the Queen, not that Queen, the other Queen. Thank you. But one does what one can, doesn't one? Now, before you get too comfortable, might I remind you to bestow a like upon this humble video? Oh, and subscribing, well, it's terribly fashionable, you know. All the royals are doing it, or so I've heard in the servant halls. And as for that notification bell, well, ring it if you must. It ensures you don't miss our thrilling gossip about the Duke and Duchess of somewhere or another. I do love a good scandal. I mean, ahem, thoughtful discussion. So go on, engage with the channel, dear. It keeps the gossip flowing. And frankly, who doesn't love a bit of drama? And with that, I bid you farewell, for now. Carry on and do be sure to come back, won't you? Prince Harry has been a consistent advocate for conservation for most of his life. His passion for Africa, and especially for protecting its wildlife, is deeply personal. In 2017, Prince Harry was named President of African Parks, becoming one of the organization's most visible and active supporters. But Prince Harry's involvement isn't just ceremonial. He's both hands-on, visiting the parks, meeting the rangers, and understanding the complexities of conservation work. His presence has brought international attention to African parks, shining a spotlight on the critical work they do and helping to secure funding for future projects. In 2020, Prince Harry's commitment deepened further when he joined the Board of Directors for African Parks. This was not just a title, it was a responsibility he embraced fully. Under his presidency, African Parks has expanded its reach, taking on new parks and strengthening its model of sustainable conservation. He has also been a vocal advocate for the safety of rangers, ensuring that their protection is a priority for the organization. You may ask, why does African parks matter so much? Well, it, it, it's not just to Africa, but to the world. The answer lies in the climate crisis. Africa's national parks are not just home to incredible wildlife. They are also critical to the planet's health. These parks help sequester carbon, protect water sources, and preserve biodiversity, which is essential for a healthy global ecosystem. As the world grapples with the impact of climate change, the work of African parks is more vital than ever. They are not just preserving Africa's wildlife, 
They are contributing to a global fight to protect the planet. By protecting vast landscapes from deforestation and degradation, African Parks is playing a key role in mitigating climate change. As we look to the future, African Park stands as a beacon of hope for con con conservation with Prince Harry's leadership. They have grown into one of the most effective conservation organizations in the world. Their model, combining government partnerships with community development, is being replicated in other regions, proving that sustainability conservation is possible. For Africa, this means a future where national parks are not just relics of the past, but living, breathing ecosystems that, that benefit both wildlife and people. For the world, it means that the fight against climate change has a powerful ally in African parks. We can't shy away from African parks, you know, finding itself at the center of a larger battle, not just about conservation, but about the future of Africa's land and their resources. They're fighting to keep the parks protected while some of the most powerful interests in the world want that land for themselves. Look what's happening in the Congo. Unlike any organization with noble aims, they're facing immense pressure, but they remain committed to their mission of protecting wildlife and uplifting people. The path ahead is, is, is not easy, but African parks works. And Prince Harry continued with his involvement. You know, continues to be that, that pivotal influence that is able to help African parks do what it needs to do for Africa to preserve its natural heritage for generations to come. African Parks represents the best, the best of what can be achieved when people come together to protect our planet. Through their work, they honor the legacy of Africa's wildlife, the bravery of their rangers, and the vision of leaders like Prince Harry, who are committed to building a better future for all of us.